All right, let's get this party started. So I've been, I want to watch this. Ever since I saw this, I want to watch this. I want to watch the Piers Morgan video interview where she goes on there, and I don't know what's going to happen. I'm excited. My wife and I binged the entire show yesterday, except for the last episode, because I was too tired. She was too tired. So unfortunately, I have not seen the last episode, but I feel like I've seen enough to see how, if this show is accurate, crazy. <laughs> this woman is insane. It was wild. So uh, a lot of the wild show, I will say, like, I've, I looked into it this a little bit outside of, like, just watching the show. And the guy admits that, like, this is sensationalized in certain ways. I don't think that she's ever been arrested before. That's why, like, this, her actual name is is Fiona Harvey. Martha is, like, a character in the show. Um, and he even said something along the lines of, like, this is how the story felt to me, right? So he's trying to communicate through feelings. You know, a little wishy-washy on that. He seems to present himself as good as possible. He seems to be a little more uh, of kind of a selfish, you know, person. I don't know if he's the best person. It seems like he really strung her along in a lot of these instances, and it probably did so worse in real life in ways that like he's not communicating to us. Um, but still, she she seems to be uh, a little crazy, a little bit super crazy, a lot of bit crazy. So I'm I'm ready to watch this. If you haven't seen it before, I'd recommend go watch it on Netflix. It, it's only seven episodes, and they're roughly half hour to 40 minutes each. You can get through it in a day. So let's get this party started. I don't know who this guy is. What's also weird, though, is that the actor, the main actor guy in the show, like the baby reindeer, he's the one that was stalked. That's the most interesting thing. Personally, I don't know if I could act. He's a good actor. But it's all, it's just so weird. It gives me, it's interesting because I feel like I wouldn't be able to act through like some of my worst traumas. You know what I mean? I would not be able to do that. That would make me a sad guy. But okay, let's go. The gift of being in a. Okay. This show is incredible. Baby reindeer. You got absolutely obsessed. My beef curtain. I did. Not move. Everybody is talking about BB Reindeer. Now fans are trying to find that guy. This guy's AI. This guy is an AI. And the real people. There's no way that this is not a filter. Behind the story. Because it doesn't depict real life events. It's blown up so quickly and so fast all around the world that I, <laughs> I didn't expect it. First of all, why have you decided to go public? When did you know that you were the person being depicted? He says the whole thing. When did you know? Once she saw him? <laughs> Started because he felt sorry for you. Have you ever been to prison? What do you feel about Richard Gatt? You think he's mentally unwell? Did you ever turn up at his house? Probably. Would you accept that someone who did that would be very obsessive about something? Here's the thing. I don't know the truth. You do. You look down the barrel of that camera. There was a point in the show where she was just sitting outside in the cold across the street from his house, and she was just freezing, and, like, she almost, like, it was, you know, she might have passed away from it, and he went and helped her, and I'm just like, you know, I dated somebody before when we would fight, and, she, you know, and listen, we were both toxic, so, you know, I, I, I'm not blaming her. You know, I'm a difficult to be with, I understand that, but she's like, she's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, she threatened to take her self out if I broke up with her. And, uh, you know, back then I was like, I, that was the reason why we stayed together, because I didn't want that to happen. Nowadays, I would be like, okay, goodbye. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not trying to be rude, but, you know, first of all, it's usually just a manipulation tactic. Second of all, it's like, I'm not trying to be unhappy, you know? So I would have I would have just let her sit at the, the, I would have let her sit at the goddamn bus stop the entire time. People who still doubt you, what do you say to them? One of the first things that viewers of Baby Reindeer are told by Netflix is that this is a true story, not based on a true story or inspired by real events, but a true story. It's emphatic about that. What's interesting is that it's not, the guy admits it's not, so which means to me that I guess Netflix is playing plausible deniability. They get to go, this is a true story from his perspective, right? But like his perspective may not be necessarily the most accurate. The show's writer, comedian Richard Gadd, even plays the lead role himself. Comedian, yeah. Self. Many millions of people across the world have now seen it. It's one of the biggest Netflix shows of the year. And I've watched it all. It's a riveting, emotionally intense drama worthy of all the critical plaudits it's now receiving. I'm going to be honest with you, though. If I was him, I would have I tapped it. I don't care. I would have went in on that shit, boy. I would have went... I don't care. I'm a dog. I would have I would have went crazy. I don't care. You know? She probably would have killed me, honestly. Viewers are gripped by the apparently real life struggle. It was weird when she mentioned cut, cutting him up, unzipping him, and then just climbing in his body. So maybe that's probably, I probably, that, yeah, I'm happy I'm a married man because I would have gotten myself in a lot of trouble. With a fledgling stand up comedian who is mercilessly stalked by an older woman, Martha, in a three year onslaught of harassment. Martha bombards him with tens of thousands of lurid emails, leaving hundreds of voicemails lurking outside his house. He, di he didn't the show. Bro, shut the fuck up. Unless that happened, shut up. Don't talk to me. 
All right? That didn't happen. Unless it happened in the last episode, that did not happen. Attacking his partner, even confronting his family and friends. Now, Richard Gadd said that he and Netflix had gone to such great lengths to disguise Martha's real identity that she wouldn't even recognize herself. Yeah, that's no way. They look very similar. The actress is actually much cuter, though. But that wasn't true. Many people did recognize Of course they're going to recognize because they know who he is. And they're like, oh, my God, this is this person. Very quickly. And the woman at the center of the story was outed online within hours simply by cross-referencing her posts on social media with those that were used in the show. Yeah, well, they use like a lot of, my understanding is they use like all or if not like a lot of actual real emails and, and, and posts on social media of her. Other details about her character bear a striking, unavoidable similarity. If it doesn't happen in the last episode, they don't sleep together. You lied. He has a fantasy that he sleeps with her in the show. But they don't think they sleep together. With the real woman now accused of being the crazed stalker Martha. Yeah. The show raises uncomfortable questions about the line between fact and fiction. It doesn't happen before last episode. That is that that didn't he didn't actually sleep with her. That was it. That was him. That was a, a fantasy he had. Okay. Because see, there was a certain point where like he was he came in, impotent. He couldn't you know get it up anymore. Part of that was because of a, a trauma he had when he was you know there was some movie guy or an older comedian that would drug him and then do it was horrible. It's a terrible thing. I'm not going to be specific about it. There's a lot going on there. But then he he gets to a point where like for some reason like he has fantasy starts to fantasize about her. He like he like in some kind of weird disgust way. Yeah, it looked real. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just a fantasy. So he has like he she left him a picture of her in like a bathing suit or like a broad panties on and he starts jacking off. He starts he starts get he starts getting it on to it. And then like he starts thinking about her while he's sleeping with his girlfriend. She's a trans woman. That's also interesting too. That was a very interesting thing. I think he's so confused about his sexual. The implication is he's so confused about his sexuality that like he can't date, like he struggles to like date, like cisgendered men and women. It's very weird. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Fantasy and reality. Another innocent man in the television industry has been falsely accused of sexual assault based on one of the storylines in the drama. Well, Fiona Harvey is the woman outed as the real Martha of Baby Reindeer. She's chosen to confirm her identity because she wants to have a right of reply. And so, okay. in her first television interview, she joins me now in the studio. Well, uh I still would have done it. I don't care. I got that dog in me. I would have done it. But she looks much scarier in real life. I'm not trying to be rude than in the show. <laughs> but it's probably a few years ago. There's a moment in the show where one of the, uh, you know what? If you if you haven't watched her yet, you should turn this off. Honestly, turn it off because I'm going to be spoiling so much. There's a point in the show where. <laughs> Like she's been spamming like a hundred emails a day, boom, 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 and then he shows one of his his friends, and the friends take it and they send like, "Oh, you want to? I want to put it in your butt." And then she's like, "I'll I'll do it in an, a Scottish way or whatever," because the accents are crazy. And I would have been like, "All right, let's do it. I don't care. I'm a dog. I'm a dirty dog." You know. Uh, thank you for joining me, Fiona. Um, first of all, why have you decided to go public? The internet sleuths tracked me down and hounded me and gave me death threats, so it wasn't really a choice. I was forced into this situation. What mm. do you hope to achieve in this interview? I came on your show because you're a veteran broadcaster. I think that uh, what really happened is she got 250 bucks for this, or pounds, I think. I looked, like, it random, when I was looking into this offline, it like randomly came up, you know? Uh, I think you'll give me a fair hearing. Um, you were persecuted yourself not so long ago. Um, so that's why I've chosen this show. Have you watched the What's also interesting is as you watch the show, like she's very meticulous and she's very intelligent in the way that like she stalks him to the point where she's able to like evade the police in an interesting way. So it's just if that is an accurate representation of her, like she knows how to speak and she knows how to come off as like a normal person. You know? So that's like one of the potential manipulation tactics that she engages in. The drama. Not at all. I've heard about the court scene, about the jail sentences and all the actual actress though has better DSLs, you know what I'm saying? This sort of stuff. But you I've really heard, haven't watched any of it? I haven't watched any of it. You're not curious to? Uh, no, I think I'm sick. Um, it's taken over enough of my life. I find it quite obscene. I find it horrifying, misogynistic. Some of misogynistic. the death threats have been really terrible online. People phoning me up. You know, it's, it's been absolutely horrendous. I wouldn't give credence to something like that. And it's not really my kind of drama. I feel like she's going to find a boyfriend through this. There's some sick fuck out there, you know what I mean? That's like, oh my God, this is what I wanted in a girl. What, when did you know that you were the person being depicted in this? Five years ago on BBC Breaking News, um, I saw uh, Mr. Gard had written a play for the Edinburgh Festival and he was hiding. He was holding up um, placards, MP's wife stalker and all of this, and mm -hmm. he called it Baby Reindeer. That's all I knew. So he made this into like a play before? Interesting. And I thought, well, I've only met this guy two or three times. Um, I don't know him. Um, and left it at that. I should have possibly jumped it at that stage. 
And when did you know that Netflix were doing something? Uh, two weeks ago, I had just moved flat, so it was two weeks ago past Saturday. And how did you hear? Um, I saw on BBC Breaking News that he'd sold to Netflix, and both he and this character, Martha, this Jessica actress, seemed to be promoting mercilessly. You know, I will say, like, uh, it's so... I, I don't know 100% what to believe, you know? And the only reason is because, again, it seems so bizarre that he would be able to reenact, like, such a potentially traumatic moment, sit down and rewrite an entire script about this and act in it himself and do so much of it. And it just... It, I, I, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I feel like, you know... Even the way he presented himself in there... Because, you know, like if you write something about yourself, generally, I would expect you to make yourself look a little better and make the other person look a little worse. And it's so interesting because like he really encourages her to stalk him so many times in the show. And it's like it's so many instances where it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, what are you doing? Like, this doesn't even make sense. You're playing into it. There was probably more flirting going on than he's like let on. Um, now, a normal person wouldn't have this interaction with flirting that she did. But it's like, come on, you couldn't identify that. You know what I mean? I don't know. I feel bad for the guy. But also, I feel like there's something we're not necessarily getting out of it. That, you know what I mean? Did you think then it was you that they were depicting? Uh, I thought it was me they were depicting five years ago because of this MP's wife stalker article that had been a number done on me by the, the Sunday Mail 25 years ago when I was going for Donald Joe's parliamentary seat. So I knew, I had a vague idea then. Um, the Daily Mail had approached me on the Wednesday. The point, the whole point of the story is he's a desperate for attention and a victim of his own narcissism. Yeah, I agree. But again, I feel like he frames himself a little better than, you know, like a little bit better than like what he actually acts like. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure that there's shame uh, partially with the way that he acts to he's acted. Because I feel like we, we almost have to read between some of the things don't like some of the things don't make sense. Like, here's what doesn't make sense to me. In the show, there's multiple characters that will tell him that, like, basically he wanted to be stalked um, and that, like, he gets off to the attention and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And watching the show, and maybe I'm just dumb, but I didn't get the feeling he, that he wanted to be stalked. You get the feeling, based on the way that he acts, that he wants that that he is trying to be a nice guy, and he feels bad for her. Um, and maybe he likes the attention a little bit, but it's mostly like I kind of feel bad for this girl, et cetera, et cetera. But then they'll tell him very explicitly, like, no, like you're basically asking for this, and it's like to me. If they're able to identify that uh, behavior, that means that there was more going on that we don't know about, you know, and that like he probably sensationalized her to be worse than she is. That doesn't mean that she's not bad. You know what I mean? And he probably sensationalized himself to be better than than, she, than he was. And he may not even be that bad. Right. So like he, here's him and here's her like good, bad, where they maybe they're supposed to be more like over here. Right. That's what it is. That's 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 what I get out of it, potentially. <laughs> So sort of two weeks tomorrow, um, but two weeks ago, if you see what I mean, um, and um, told me that- Like someone said, isn't he a kind of attractive or in a weird perverted way? You know, I think that he was from the start. I think that there was something about, like, listen, dude. Um, I think that there was something from the start. Like he probably had like a weird, like, oh, disgusting, like a fat fetish. You know that there's guys who like want to feed women until they like get like really fat. It doesn't come from like, I think this is sexy. It comes from, I think this is disgusting. That's what it comes from. You know what I mean? And I, I kind of understand it. I get it. I have a thing like that sometimes for, <laughs> for like armpits. It's fucking gross. I know. You know, I make jokes about it, but it's like, I get that feeling. Um, you know, so, you know, I just feel like, I, you know, it's it's a it's a complicated situation, you know, and then there's the other factor of like, sometimes we retell our own stories from a more charitable perspective because we just don't quite understand the objective nature of what happened to, to us. Um, we only uh, engage in it in a subjective nature. Right. Like we have this on one on one aspects every day. Like, you know, you and your, your maybe my wife will have like little mini spats because maybe both of us are tired that day. But I'm so I'm cranky and she's cranky. And then like, you know, we retell this, the, the events when we have like a little bit of a, a a fight, not a fight, but like we we talk about it after. And we like this is how I felt. And this is how this is what I felt like you were doing. And she said, well, this is how I felt. And this is what I felt like you were doing. And you're like, oh, OK. And now we have a full more full story because we both talked about it. But when he sounds like he didn't exactly talk to her about writing the script. You, you kind of don't get a full story. 
So that I was getting death threats online, that I've been outed as Mar Martha, there were TikTok videos. And were you online this... at all? Because you were before, but are you these days online? Uh, I, I'm, I've come off Facebook as of yesterday. Uh... Okay, so she was online. Um... Are you on X, what used to be Twitter? Uh, no, I'm not. You had an account. Here. Yeah, that's right. Um, years and years ago. Um, I'm scared to Google up BBC Breaking News. I'm scared, certainly scared to Google up the Daily Mail um, in case I am on it in some bizarre circus. That moment you realised mm. it was you mm -hmm. that they were depicting from what you were reading, the sleuths, as you say, had found your mm -hmm. tweets, they compared some of the mm -hmm. phraseology, mm -hmm. they'd done the maths and they worked out this was you that was being depicted. How did that make you feel? Absolutely horrendous. Um, absolutely horrendous. Um, I couldn't believe he'd done that. And so long after first meeting, you know, we're talking 10, 12 years ago, um, really horrendous. I didn't know who to trust. I was told by the Daily Mail, don't trust those bleep bleeps in Scotland. Or like, are you saying something racist? Uh, whereas I found John Dingwall of the Daily Record completely wonderful, actually. He's acted with total courtesy. Um, I couldn't believe this had happened. I want to play a little clip. This is just mm. some of the reaction to Baby Reindeer sure. from members of the public. She ends up becoming... This the crazy stalker I ever seen in my life. And this is all a true story. This is all a true story, yeah. Um, and they've found the real woman online. So I not, assume yeah. in the actual thing, they've obviously given her a different name. Mm. It's a, a, a different woman. But you know what I find? They always, they always manage to find a similar looking woman and the build tends to yeah. be the same. Oh, yeah, they are. So again, the actress is more attractive. But again, the dude that plays in the in the in the show is the guy that this happened to. So I feel like all you really need to do is be like, "Oh shit, that's fucking Bingle." I don't know. The f I don't know his name. I think I guess it's Richard. I think it's Richard Gad in the show. He's like Dan Donnie Dumfrey or some Donnie Dunn or something. Um you're like, "Oh, I know that guy." Oh, wait a minute. This that girl looks similar to this. Oh, wait, the bar. Oh, wait, the bar. Oh, wait, this. Oh, wait. What I'm more interested in is what does that what does his trans girlfriend look like in real life? I want to see if you know how she looks. I'm kind of curious. I also want to know who the guy he alleges assaulted him looks like. I want to know who that is, the older comedian that like that was a very vulnerable moment. He's talking about how um, he was basically groomed. It was intense, and he would feed him drugs and alcohol and tell him that he's going to be able to be like a big star and he like has him come over and he does all these things and then like come the weekend he's like yelling at him through email telling him to redo all the scripts over again and like you know because he was doing writing for him for free and do all this and you know and there was one moment where he's talking he's reflecting on it and he's like I, and it was so it was it was just so like not politically correct but it was just so kind of real and he's like you know, this happened to me multiple times where I would go there, get drunk or get really high. He would feed me drugs and then he would assault me. And he's like, I, and, and I don't know, basically, I don't know why I kept going back. And, uh, it's so horrible. And I remember my wife and I were having a conversation just before about grooming. And she's like, you know, like we had this, we came to this realization where it's like, and this is going to sound horrible, but like, it's not, you, you weren't really groomed unless you kind of enjoyed it. And that sounds terrible because like it had to be effective. The person had to effectively groom. He was effectively groomed into like, you know, breaking down the barriers. And it's like, damn, that's horrible. Like when you really think about it, like that's what grooming is. It's like when you actually think you're safe, you know what I mean? That's the worst part about it. And then it turns out like he wasn't safe. And he had that realization when he was like, I think the first time he did acid, he's like, wait, you know, his, uh, his, his little, you know, his Geppetto, we'll say. No, his Jiminy Cricket came out, his conscience. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with me? And he's like, I got to get out of here. Thank you for the $5, Jack Esposito. Hey, hey, uh, Papa. Hey, yo. Today was the first day of my pharmacy tech class. Hey, good for you. P.S. Please bless up. Check out uh, Jutang by YOD. What is that? <laughs> okay. I might check that out after. Thank you, brother. Um, theory about this though I feel like he yeah that speech did you not watch the show dude he's done it on purpose because he knew that people would find her and he wants to make her life yeah, hell he a bit when you hear that what do you think uh, the, the final guy on there I think is correct I think he always wanted this to come out to persecute someone to take attention away from him and this rape allegation and I just generally think he's got extreme psychiatric problems I mean there's no doubt he has problems I mean if you watch the yeah for sure that he's written it about himself the, yeah. If you watch the the whole thing as I did, all five, six episodes, whatever it is. Uh, There's seven episodes, Pierce. Um, he has a lot of problems. He's quite open about that. Did it happen in real life? I I doubt it. I doubt that he did like this whole monologue when he's supposed to do a comedy show in real life. I feel like that was part of the thing that was like sensationalized. I could be wrong though, you know? The, the question, I guess, which we'll come to is how much of the way he depicts you is true. And your position is that... He, my thing here is, is that I feel like there needs to be a more appropriate boundary set here. 
um, when it comes to interacting with the show. Right, because again, even in the show, he admits that like he, all these a bunch of heinous things had happened, and he didn't report them though to the police just for no reason. And again, I think part of it's because he 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 had some level of attraction to her, whether it was physical or sexual or emotional, or you know he liked the attention or whatever. Um, and so like again, he's going to tell the story from a perspective that makes him look a little better and her a little worse, or maybe a lot better and a lot worse, you know, the different degrees of that. And so the, the the boundary I have with that is like it's just this is interesting and it's something to to think about. The monologue was real. Okay. It's interesting and it's something to think about. But like I wouldn't harass her. You know what I mean? Because it's just like that's not we don't fully know exactly what happened. And again, like he has uh, definitely has uh, issues to play here as well. You know, uh, he, he has there, there's some blame for him as well. So it's just not factual. It's a work of fiction. It's a work of hyperbole, as I've always said. Hyperbole. And um, th there are two true facts in that. His name is Richard Gadd, and he worked as a jobbing barman on benefits um, in the Holy Arms. And we met two or three times. So th th those are the only Well, let's go facts. back to Let's go through some of these things. So mm -hmm. you first met him. I mean, the, the, the show shows you coming in to a London pub. You've just named the pub. And he's working behind the bar, Richard Gadd, and he offers you a cup of tea. Is that what happened? No, that's not correct. Um, he didn't offer me a cup of tea. Nobody gets anything free from the Holly Arms. Um, I was in for a meal with um, a drink of lemonade, and I was very, very hungry. I'm diabetic, so very hungry. So that, that You're having lemonade and you're diabetic? <laughs> I feel like the Diet Coke would make more sense then, because I think the first time was a tea, and then every other time it was a Diet Coke. And he always gave it to her in the house. And I remember my wife sitting there, she's like, how can he get away with giving her free drinks so often? And I'm sitting here, I'm like... That might be true. Maybe he sensationalized something. Maybe she did pay sometimes. And then also I thought, like, it's just, like, at these bars, these sometimes they don't really give a shit sometimes at different bars. Like, yeah, whatever. Like, the like, syrup costs them almost nothing, you know? But... That's and did you truth. talk to him? Um, he interrupted a conversation. There was another barman there. And he said, oh, you're Scottish. And basically commandeered the conversation. I, you know, I was talking to somebody. It's pretty rude to interrupt. So he seemed to be obsessed with me from that moment onwards. I mean, just think... <laughs> it's so terrible because it, it, uh, this is a horrible thing to say, but... And Rich it's it's hard to think that um this guy well this guy would be obsessed with her but then again maybe it's not maybe i don't know there's something about him that's interest i don't know man i don't even know there's something interesting about this guy's look you know what i mean there's something there is something peculiar about both of their looks that you could almost ship the two of them together you know i don't know I don't i've never met you before but you do know, look man. and sound very similar to the actress in the drama. Well, the actress seemed to have done a good job studying her, you know, mannerisms. I haven't seen the actress. We're both Scottish. We've both got dark hair. Um, she's considerably younger than me. I think she's about 18 years younger than me. How old are you, if you don't mind me? I'm 58. I'm a year younger than you. Mm. And I think Martha, Jessica... I am the contrast as well. The actress is about 40, mm. 38, 40. It says in the show that you... I like that sound. ...to return to the same pub time and again, but you never paid for a drink. I don't drink alcohol and... Well, he never once said that you did. It was always a Diet Coke. Did you pay for anything that you had? Uh, lemonade or soft drinks. Would he give you free drinks? Or? No, absolutely not. This is sort of a depiction of me as a pauper who wouldn't stand around or stand a drink. It's nonsense. It says that you told Richard Gadd he looked like a baby reindeer toy you once had as a child, hence the name of the show. Yep. Is that yep. true? I, I, appear, I appear to have uh, written most of the show in my sleep. Um, I dressed um, the... It, Did you have a baby reindeer I toy? had a toy reindeer. So that's true. And he shaved his head. That bit is true. Mm. And there were reindeers in the shops. It was Christmas time or something. It was a joke. So I have inadvertently okay. paid... So she definitely called him baby reindeer. But again, here's my thing. How many of those emails were real? Um... Are the emails from Baby Reindeer? Because if those are real, Netflix has previously claimed that the emails in the show are the real emails received from Gad and his stalker. Uh, I think he probably made it up himself as Miss Harvey Lunch. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I mean, now that could mean that like every email was va was verified that they was sent. But that also just might mean the ones that they showed us were real. But the one, some of the ones they showed us were fucking crazy. If the ones that they showed us are real, which I'm inclined to believe Netflix that they are real because I feel like Netflix would would legal from a legal standpoint protect themselves. But if those are real, she sent him some wild, 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 wild shit. It is incre is incredible. Name of the show, right? But that is true. That's true. That's that's a true fact. Um. 
Whilst bantering with you, Richard Gadd told you he'd like to hang your curtains. Is that true? This, I think, was a Holy Arms joke about curtains and a lot of sexual innuendo. He did say that? Uh, yeah. OK. Did you like it? Is it true? If he contacted you tomorrow, would you fuck him? That you caught Richard Gadd looking through your window after he followed you home one false, day? False, false. You never saw him at your house? Um, I didn't see him at my house. I think it would be impossible to look through. Yeah, him. that's when that, that's when he uh, allegedly followed her home because she kept saying, I'm a lawyer, I'm a this, I'm a this, blah, 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 and I'm really famous and successful. But she would just sit at the bar all day. So he's like, okay, they he kind of like what they they had like a date. It was a get to, it was a very awkward uh, scenario. But he ended up going in different directions, the two of them. And then he followed her. He said, I just want to see what, what her apartment looks like. And it looked like shit. Indo Did so anyone else ever see him there? No. So as far as you were concerned, he never turned up at your place. Correct. But, the, but the, the Netflix show has him doing that. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. I've been told that. But that categorically didn't happen. That categorically didn't happen. In the course of your relationship with Richard Gadd, you send him 41,000 emails. Holy fuck! 350 voice messages, 744 tweets, 48 Facebook messages, and 106 letters. That's simply not true. Letters? He never even mentioned letters. Um, I mean, I guess for brevity. It was the seven episodes. It was very short. It was like, it was good. The pacing was meaningful, so you're probably going to get aspects lost in there as well. So, you know, maybe that's part of it uh, from before when I said, you know, some of the things he didn't necessarily accurate, may not have accurately represented. It might have just been for brevity's sake, like get this out as, as quick as possible. Um, if somebody was sending somebody 41,000 emails or something, they'd be doing how many a day? Lots. Well, they'd Lots. be obsessively Yeah, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely well, not. What none did you send true. them? No, none of that's true. I don't think I sent them anything. You never sent them anything? No. I think, I think there may have been a couple of emails exchanging, but that was it. Just jokey banter emails. Netflix Netflix have said that these details are uh, the real ones. Mm. That this is, this is this exactly... I, I'm inclined to believe Netflix. Be only because, like, not because I trust Netflix, but because I trust Netflix not to want to get fucking sued up and out the fucking asshole. That's what I trust. I trust that they would keep themselves... They, they would, like, I doubt that they would pick up this this story and... and make it and produce it or whatever whatever the fuck it's called um and buy it and not check the legalities of the situation so i i tend to believe that she sent this this you know however to tens of thousands of messages overall it's fucking crazy completely incorrect so you're denying anyone... sending anything to him uh, there may have been a couple of emails text but messages uh, no facebook messages i don't think that she ever got his cell phone number nope did you tweet him? Um, I may have done years and years ago. You actually tweeted him numerous times. No, it wasn't numerous. It was about 18 tweets there or 14 It's quite tweets. a lot to someone who's... That is quite a lot. Not that well known. But we were all friends. You know, we, it was banter. Right, but it establishes yeah. you were contacted. That's in public. Yes, I mean, this... Uh, Did you write him letters? In public. No. I think when I, found, when I saw the... Right well, we have him right here, I wish. ...interview. That's actually incorrect what I said there. When I, when I saw that in The Guardian, I said, what a shame, it's not your fault. Something you like did that. write to him. One later, one later, one later. So... You you would say you only sent him a handful of emails. Yeah. You never texted him. No. You tweeted him eighteen. Again, times. I don't think I don't think that uh, he ever claimed she texted him. I think that like that was one of the things where he, uh, she had never gotten access. At least from what I remember, because again, I didn't watch the last episode. But from what I remember, that was she couldn't have access. But apparently, she was calling his parents. I think. You never sent a Facebook message. Yeah, she said that they weren't friends, and now they are friends. Yeah, yeah, it's everything starting to unravel a little bit. Uh -huh. That's and you wrote in one letter. Yeah. So why have they got all these details here, which are supported? Who is they? Netflix. Who has sent all this? Correct. So I'm sorry. Who has sent all this stuff to him? I've no idea. I think he's probably made it up himself. I mean, you could prove, I guess, quite easily it wasn't you. Correct. Because it'd all be on your. Um, that's actually not true. She could have just deleted them all and be like, "See, there's nothing here." You know what I mean? She could get her ass. She could get away with it like that. Computer. Yeah, correct. Device. That's right. Would you be happy for someone to look at that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, yeah. What, what do you have? What technology? She'll say yeah now and then like she wouldn't, you know what I mean? What technology do you use? Right, what technology do I use? A very, very old smartphone just now because the other one packed up. Oh, that was one of the other things too. Like, oh, she used an old smartphone, but apparently she would always, well, she had a flip phone, I think, in the show, but she would always write sent from my iPhone to make it seem like she had an iPhone. Isn't that fucking crazy, dude? Like, that's insane. <laughs> that's insane. Probably before moving. That's it. Because they're all sent from an iPhone. Yes, yeah, so they believe it wasn't actually an iPhone ever being used. Meaning what Meaning kind that of someone phone? was hiding the fact that they were actually not using it. They were pretending it was from an iPhone. I don't really understand that. Well, people can mask where they're sending stuff from. Okay. Well, okay. like uh, when you send an email, for whatever reason, it, it automatically texts, like sends at the bottom of your email, like I sent from an iPhone, right? And she would always do that up, you know. Right, I'm not technology with kid of the year. I wasn't doing that either. 
I mean, obviously, when you make such an emphatic denial... You don't have to be like an tech, tech expert on that one to just, uh, get a text from or an email from someone else that it says that on there. Well, the mm. central point of the story. Mm. You're basically accusing both him, but also Netflix of lying about it. I am. And that's, that's pretty defamatory. It's not defamatory if it's true. No, no, it's defamatory that they've been to Oh, you. I'm sorry. Yes, I misunderstood there. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I don't see how anyone could do 41,000 emails and all this kind of stuff you know i don't, I don't know, know how much I, you... I, I doubt i just i couldn't i couldn't imagine netflix would fuck themselves that hard no, but, technology, but are you aware that if it was you sending those emails it would be very easy for the police for example to work out exactly where they come from the ip address yeah, would reveal yes that. i understand that and it stays on forever but the point is this was years and years <coughs> ago we were congratulating him but it would, all, it would all still be there uh, yes yes i understand that yeah and if you sent forty one thousand emails this is all... just a lot of rubbish yeah so that should be stored there imagine imagine that she just doesn't realize that she sent forty one thousand. <laughs> well they'd all be there yeah i mean he's got them he's not got forty one thousand emails that's over a year well, according to you there's only, there's only a handful yeah right? i mean how long would that take someone to type up how many do you think you sent him over a, a year handful? Like, like that, what does that mean? How many? Uh, uh, the number the number does seem to slowly be increasing. Forty one thousand emails divided by um it's three hundred and sixty five days would have to be a hundred and twelve a day. I th that's doable if you're if you don't do anything else. I don't know. Listen, ten. Ten emails. Not forty one thousand. Right, there's a massive disparity between the yeah, two. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's not you that sent all this, then clearly Martha cannot be you. Yes, Martha cannot be me because there are a number of allegations that have been put to me by journalists uh, okay. that are simply not true. There's a whole play. It's not just the emails. There's a sexual assault in the canal. There's... But, but oh, right. Yep, yep. She she pens him up against a wall and starts touching his balls or something, you know, his wiener and stuff. It's pretty crazy. If, oh, oh, if the police looked at this, mm -hmm. and if you sue, for example, mm -hmm. then this will go to a court of law. Mm -hmm. And then on discovery, people will look into all this. Mm -hmm. The phone company will be asked about evidence of all the text messages. Mm -hmm. The internet providers will provide all the backup mm -hmm. for the emails. Facebook mm -hmm. will be asked about the Facebook messages mm -hmm. and so on. So all of this would come out in a court case. In disclosure, yes. And you're prepared to yeah. do that? Yes. No, she's not. I, I guarantee you that this is, I think that she, I, I mean, listen, maybe she will. I read something that she, she uh, might be actually suing but I feel like more of this is more of a front to be like, yeah, 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 we're going to do all that. And then afterwards, she's going to disappear. And she's already cast down into people's minds because I don't think people are like, I don't think most people are going to try to keep up on everything going on, you know? And so this is for the people like myself who aren't like super invested, who are like, they, I, I found this interesting. But after today, I really don't care. Like, I'm not going to sit here and like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, Martha. <laughs> I'm not going to Martha this situation and be like, oh my God, what's going on every day? Like compulsively fucking emailing. Because I didn't write in the emails. Who do you think did? I have no idea. I think he probably made them up himself. I have no idea. 41,000 emails. Yeah. I mean, would you, I know. would you accept that someone who did that would be very obsessive about someone? Yes, I mean that's a lot of emails. Yeah, and is. why? Why now? Why didn't you go to the police at the time? Or this sort of doesn't make sense. I mean, the fact uh, that Netflix have said this is based on reality. This is a true story uh -huh. that Martha did. The real life Martha, uh -huh. the person they based this on, who Richard Gadd has written about, uh -huh. is the person that sent these, uh -huh. and he has the evidence to prove it. What you're saying is that that proves you cannot be Martha. Yes, and I would like to see Netflix's evidence for that, which would come out in disclosure as well. And you're 100% sure World it's not discovery. you. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's just another, over, like, you know, older fat woman. <laughs> he goes on to say that you heckled Richard Gabb when he was appearing. I'm sure it's exaggerated, but even if 50%. Well, this is the thing. I guarantee, I, I, would, I would bet money on uh, the numbers being correct. The numbers are probably correct. Some of the, e the emails that they use to represent her are probably correct, and the numbers, the amounts are correct. Every single event, though, is not necessarily going to be correct. Anything that needs verification, that, that has the uh, ability to verify, will be correct. The number of voice messages, the number of uh, tweets, the number of Facebook messages, the number of emails, the number of this, those are going to be correct. The individual event reaccounting, that wouldn't be uh that may not necessarily be correct but it is interesting because i will tell you that we what one of the things that is correct is the way that the actress uh acts out her part very well and that's optically just doesn't look good for her it just doesn't look good for her optically because if everything is so almost perfect uh representation except the actress is better looking um it just it's hard it's it just doesn't stand up 
you know? It doesn't stand up for her. In your stand-up shows, did you ever do that? No. Never? No, it's not. Did you ever attend your stand-up? I think I went to one. It was a long, long time ago. And you never shouted? Just to one. Out or anything? Why would I do that? No, I don't know. No, 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 I mean... Do you ever, do you ever do shout that? out at comedy shows? I don't know. No, no, I don't generally go to comedy shows. Um, so but you no. never heckled him? No. Did you ever attack Richard Gadd's girlfriend because you were jealous? No, I don't think he had a girlfriend. I think he's uh, homosexual, but no, I have never been to his house or... <laughs> I think he's homosexual. I think he's bisexual, is my understanding. And his girlfriend was trans. And apparently in the show, uh, she called her a man. She said, you look like a man, bro. She didn't say bro. I said that. But that's what she said. It was fucked up. It was actually terrible. Attacked any girlfriend or anything like that. There are lots of scenes where Martha is huh? sitting outside his house all day for right. many days, mm -hmm. sitting in a bus stop, sitting out there, walking around, and would occasionally shout at him. Did you ever do that? No, I haven't seen the show, uh, but I, I'm getting. I have. So I got, I'm you. Yes, I got all the court allegations, mm. um, the trial allegations. I'm going to come to that, but on yeah. that point, did you ever turn up at his house? No, I don't know. I don't know where he lived. No, absolutely not. So whoever's doing all this is somebody completely different. Yeah, this is a fictional character, hyperbole, exaggeration. This is a fiction. Well, it's based on of his imagination. They say it's based on a real person. Who's they? Netflix. Well, Netflix or and Net Richard Gadd. Netflix Gad. are about as mad as Richard Gadd. If they're saying that, it's absolutely not correct. Did you ever contact Richard Gadd's parents and no, threaten them? No, that allegation was... That was amazing, that part. Because she went, you know, in the show, she contacted the parents. And the dad's just telling her, he's like, if you contact me again, I'm going to fucking kill you. It was awesome. He was a badass. I was, he was a fucking badass. Me by journalists, no. Never happened? No. She apparently recorded every interaction they had, too. It was wild. There's <laughs> one key point in the drama. <laughs> Yeah. that uh, has Martha's character pleading guilty to intimidating Richard Gadd. Oh, she said that she didn't know where he lived, but also apparently sent him a letter. Yeah, how would she send him a letter if she didn't know where he lived? Unless he sent it to the bar, he goes. Gadd in court and sentenced to nine months prison time. Hold on. There's one key point in the drama yeah. that uh, has Martha's character pleading guilty to intimidating Richard Gadd in court and sentenced to nine months. Oh, I must not have heard of that. That must be the last episode. Prison time. Uh, let's watch. You are charged with the stalking of Mr. Donald Dunn between the dates of the 14th of August 2015 and the 22nd of March 2017. Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty. <laughs> you are charged with the harassment of Gerald Dunn and Eleanor Dunn between the dates of the 6th of June 2016 and the 22nd of March 2017. Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty. <laughs> A little read here. Now, again, there is a, obviously a resemblance between... Do you think so? Well, look, <laughs> That's hardly <only> flattering. <laughs> well, I, I don't mean to flatter you or not. You say it's not flattering? I see a resemblance between... Do you think so? Well, look, <laughs> That's hardly flattering. Well, I, I don't mean to flatter you She said it's not flattering? I don't know. Uh, it's hard to tell with the... With the, the, the well, I'm not flattering you. I just think there is a resemblance, you know, having met you and you both... Speak. The whole court thing didn't happen, apparently, according to Gad. Yeah, that's what I had heard as well. It's hard to tell where everything you know, starts and ends. Scottish people. Yeah. Um, but the fundamental point of this is, mm. did you did you take part in that? Did you go to jail? Did you have no, a trial? No, of course not. Of course not. Have you ever been to prison? No. Have you no. ever been charged with no, a criminal offence? No. Never? No. Nothing? Nothing. So that scene is completely invented. That's completely false, and I don't... I imagine... Um, I mean that that might be. I mean it might be real. I mean again that'll come out in court. I don't know how the you know how court documents work, but um, hardly flattering. The fucking actress looks better than her. What the hell? But um, that would come out in court. But again, that might have been some kind of sensationalization, some way to wrap up the story to make it uh, seem like a resolution for people watching. That could have been like an artistic choice, right? I don't think the actress sounds like me. I mean, people compare me to Lorraine Kelly. Uh, Gaddis said that his real-life stalker served no jail time and that he wouldn't want her to because of how mentally ill she was. Interesting. But I look nothing like Lorraine Kelly. We all happen to have dark hair and we're Scottish. Mm. You know, I think the actress is from Glasgow, I think, but I'm not sure. But they, and which part of Scotland do you from? I'm from the Central Belt. Um, the so it's a slightly different accent. It, it, it's slightly different. A Scot would know the difference. A Scot would know the difference. A Glasgow accent is very different. But that's a fundamental mm. point here, because if they basically have a key point in their drama, mm -hmm. which they say is a true story, which involves you admitting to intimidating mm -hmm. Richard Gadd and getting a mm -hmm. nine-month prison mm -hmm. sentence. And that is completely untrue. That's completely untrue. Very, very defamatory to me. Um, very career damaging. And I wanted to rebut that completely on this show. I'm not a stalker. I've not been to jail. I've not got injunctions. Yeah, I mean, that could speak poorly against him if she does sue. Because if you're trying to pass this off as a real story, unless before the last episode they explicitly said that this last part is, like, fictitious, um... 
they could be poo pooed on. They might get dumpstered on a little bit there. You know, there might be enough in there to um, there might be enough in there to actually get uh, pass a lawsuit. But I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine that Netflix wouldn't be smart enough to be able to evade that. This is just complete nonsense. But it's I mean, you'll know yourself if you're charged with a criminal offense, it will go um, fine. Bigger fine, whatever. Very few people go to jail. We'd have a police record nowadays. Yeah. Have you ever changed your name? Uh, my, my my surname was double barreled. What was it? Uh, Muir Harvey. So huh? Muir Harvey. When Muir, I M U I R. Yes, Harvey. When I go. What the fuck is double barreled? Is that the same thing as like hyphenated? Um, what is double barreled? I've never heard of that before. It might just be hyphenated. So. Um, when the parents got divorced, I changed it to Harvey. I just dropped. So your the... your maiden name when you were born was yeah, that's right. Was Muir, Muir. Yes. Muir Harvey. Yeah. Oh, Mjolnir. Yeah, I know that hammer. So that's not quite an unusual name. Yeah. So if you'd ever received a criminal conviction for anything, it would yeah. be on police files. Yes. And what you're saying is you've never been. Yeah, I feel like there's no chance that Netflix is a risk on that. Yeah. I mean, maybe they did. Maybe they actually, you know, screwed the pooch here. But again, like I, I couldn't imagine the legal team not sitting there and reading through the script. That would be very unintelligent if they didn't. Even charged was an offense. No. Let alone the one that they. Yes, I mean. Uh, if something is based on true story, that doesn't mean it has to be 100 percent correct. My understanding, from what Pierce had said at the beginning of this, is it wasn't based on a true story. They said it was a true story. That's the distinction that he had made. So if that is a true distinction, um, then that looks very bad. Uh, that that looks that looks pretty bad for him. If it wasn't just based, on, and, and again, uh, that's I guess the difference was baby was baby reindeer uh, a true story or based. On a true story, that that language would be um, the story is harrowing is based on true events. Okay, I get I I, I could have swore he said that it was a true story, not based on a true story. For some reason, that's like sticking out to me, but maybe I misheard that. This is um, nine and a half months in jail. is It's pretty serious. Did Netflix ever contact you? No, no one's contacted me. Never, never. Thank you for the five dollars from Mason. I have one more semester left, then I graduate with a bachelor's in computer science. Hey, very good. I also have a job lined up. Thanks for paying for my union, probably. Yeah, no problem with it. Good for you, man. That's great stuff. Did Richard Gad tell you what he was doing? No, I had worked it out when I saw the festival Baby Reindeer advert on BBC the Edinburgh Festival, which the Edinburgh the Festival. I just happened to see that I was looking up the news for something else because that's where he I just owned... happened to see that well that's where he started telling the story yeah. and that's got that got picked I'm up I'm shocked I'm shocked and I think Martha Vane was a bar stool I seem to recall reading that it wasn't an actress a bar stool sort of person it's a bar stool let me that? just show a little clip this is from Lorraine actually who you okay. just compared yourself um, to but let's take a look at this what other this people is, do I this is Richard Gadd <laughs> on Lorraine I just thought it was the right time to sort of try and bring a nuanced conversation to something. I yeah. think the human human condition is extremely uh, complicated, exactly. and, and I felt like a lot of the art and TV in this day and age had maybe simplified it too much. It's not a villain and, and victim <laughs> storyline. I think you're left with a lot more than that. It's kind of two lost people. Mm. What's your response to that? Um, I think they're milking it for all it's worth for the money. She doesn't even sound Scottish in that interview. Her <laughs> She doesn't even sound Scott. Yeah, I mean it's called acting, of course. She's not going to sound Scottish in there. And yeah, to, to an extent, they are going to milk it. But that is that is uh, like that is like a typical show business thing. So nobody's going to hear that and go like, "Oh my god, how terrible they're milking the situation." Because they would just be like, "Oh, we're advertising the situation, right?" So accent seems to be varying. Well, well she's like, not. She's English. She's an actress. I was going to say she's. It sounds more no, she, like she put, to me. She, yeah, no, she's English. Which she's, had, uh, she's an actress. She's, she's putting that, on yeah, the voice exactly. for you. They're milking it for all they're worth. Um, it was the right time for. <laughs> As if that would matter to anybody. Or to abuse someone on all over social media and all over. Thank you for the uh, small gut from the noobity noob. Thank you, brother. For, you know, basically somebody who's not, not from Lovey Land, not from Theatre Land, just abused me all over the newspapers. If they're happy with themselves. What do you feel about Richard Gadd? I think he's a, I think he's psychotic, and I think that anyone going along, being in that play, and doing this to somebody, um, I, I, I find that I find the behaviour outrageous. Mm. He says the whole thing started because he felt sorry for you, mm. and that's why he befriended you. Your staff said that to me in the uh, the waiting room. Um, this is a lot of nonsense. I've got lots of friends. What did you talk to him about? It, it was just a Holy Arms banter. It was like um, what? What kind of? Uh, thing? What are you going to do with your life, or you know, career stuff? You know, sort of. And I thought he was a stand up show. But is it possible that he, is it possible he was under the impression that he felt sorry for you? No, I never got that impression at all. I mean, just looking at him, I could see why he might feel sorry for her. I'm not trying to be rude. You know what I mean? That's a terrible thing to judge a book by its cover. Uh, but to be clear, I, you most of the time when you judge a book by its cover, you're right. You know, and I don't I really don't want to sound like a meanie bobini head, but let's be f absolutely honest here, guys. When uh, most of the time when you judge a book by its cover, 
You're right, brothers. I'm just saying, dude. I'm just if you look at me and you're like, this guy probably eats a lot, you're probably right. Because you know what I mean? There obviously are instances where uh you know you, you, you need to give people a chance to to as well. You know, but if I see a fucking if I see uh, somebody on the streets scratching at themselves and they're really skinny and they're like, Can I have a dollar? I'm I you're probably on crack, right? Like I'm not trying to be fucking rude though. But I'm just gonna keep myself safe, brothers. You know what I'm saying? I, I got the impression that he was all out for himself, wanted to um, sort of control that bar, very, very um, um, inarticulate, very full of himself. Well, it's hard to say he's inarticulate because, like, he was he was very articulate in the in the in the show that he presented. He I never have gone in that bar. <laughs> Do you so, wish you never had? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. How long did you know him for? Would you go? Two or three months. Hmm. Two or three months at maximum. He only worked there on certain days. And did you always go on the days you worked there? No, I've been in there on different days having food. Have other people from the pub contacted you? Nobody's contacted me. No one has this. Shit, if I was them, I would have stayed the fuck out of this. It's all apart from the media, the mainstream media and stalkers on social media. He says, Richard Gunn, he didn't see you as a... I mean, it would make sense for them to not contact her if they felt bad for her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Villain, but as somebody who is unwell and needs help. Yeah, well, he maybe he should look a bit closer to home um, to himself as someone who needs help. <laughs> Okay. What do you think he's mentally unwell? Yes, I think he always was. Probably. I mean, like, let's be fucking real, dude. Yeah. Whether there was a, an alleged rape or, or whether that rape was real or conceived in his mind, I think that would make him more. I mean, that's unwell. a rape that he says happened. Mm -hmm. It was a, a television uh, person. We don't know who it was. Mm. Uh, somebody was. Well, I, th I think that Pierce is like, I think she's, I, I wonder if she's referring to the. Uh, uh, the the alleged assault from a television uh, individual, or if she's uh, he's or excuse me, she's referring to the when he she grabbed him, you know, falsely linked with it. Who turns out to have nothing to do with it? But he, it's a very graphic scene in the drama where he is that. brutally raped uh, after a lot of drugs are taken, um, and he's kind of very he appears to be in the drama very self reflective about himself. So he's no angel he's not perfect he's made mm. lots of mistakes mm. and he didn't treat you in his eyes as a villain like he says as somebody mm. he felt that you were both slightly lost souls um i didn't know the rape scene was in um the play until this morning somebody's daughter had watched it and told me about it so I was somebody's daughter had watched it <laughs> she has a lot of friends huh surprised once again well not surprised actually i'm i'm really surprised by anything he does nowadays um um he seems to have written a couple of other shows about this alleged rape then this one and um uh, We've had no apologies from Netflix or him or nothing. I mean, for someone who says he feels sorry for me, I've had no apology. And I have this Martha character seems to smash up a bar, um, sexually assaulted him in a canal, been to prison. Um, there are a number of other allegations. There. None of that is true. That's not true. He says, why are we, why are, were we so quick to dismiss SA towards men? Uh, who's, who's dismissing it? I don't know. What are you talking about? That, um, People shouldn't try to find out the identity of the real people in the drama. Um, do you give <laughs> I mean, five people I love, I've worked with and admire, including Sean Foley and unfa are unfairly persecuted. Okay. Please don't speculate on who any of these real life people could be. Shit, I would. What the fuck are you talking about? So I would, I'm absolutely going to speculate who the fuck these people are. What the hell are you talking about? And credit for that, Mrs. No, no. He I actually didn't... tweeted this. People no, what, uh, I love, have worked with this, and no. admire, including Sean Foley, who was the man wrongly uh -huh, accused of, of being uh -huh. the rapist, are unfairly getting caught up in speculation. Please don't speculate on who any of the real life people could be. That's not the point of our show. Lots of love, Richard. Yes, I'm sorry. I can't see that. the date of that tweet. I can't actually see that any was, of it. That was literally. I mean, who is it? This guy? Who's Sean Foley? It looks kind of like the guy from the show. Like a few days after it was released. Right. So. I, I saw the headline. It was all over BBC Breaking News two weekends ago for four days. Big black cock breaking news. Um, with Martha promoting herself, the character Martha, Jessica, promoting herself, and him saying, don't speculate. Wow, that's a bit rich now, isn't it? The fans do speculate. It well, yeah, I mean, it's hard not to speculate, especially with her when you have those so many details, the actor who wrote it or the person that this supposedly happened to. Um, you know, he, <laughs> he stars in the show. It's kind of impossible. It was almost instantaneous. You were tracked down incredibly quickly. Uh, the of Wednesday, course. the Daily Mail got in touch with me. So that was all over BBC Breaking News, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I mean, yeah. the reason that and, internet uh, sleuths were able to, to yeah, find out it was yeah. you was they found the tweets mm -hmm. that you sent mm -hmm. him. Uh, throughout 2014, mm -hmm. um, 10th of May, for example, 2014. <laughs> oh yeah. Richard Gadd, did you get my re recorded delivery letter sent to the theatre? Mm -hmm. Sent to arrive bank holiday Monday. Mm -hmm. So you sent him a letter then? That, that was that, um, sorry you were, to hear you were right, something like that. Uh, 12th of June, same year, your tweets cheer me up, your timeline is good. 
sorry to hear you were raped. What does that mean? Like F <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm 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 not understanding a hundred percent like what this timeline is. Went to the theatre, mm. sent to arrive bank holiday Monday. Mm. So you sent him a letter then. That that was that. Um, sorry, you were to hear you were raped, something like that. Uh, is she saying that she heard that he was raped in the story, the original story, and sent them of an apology? <sighs> what? Wasn't that story about her though, as well, or was this original story just about that? I, none of this makes any sense to me. Yeah, how'd you send him a letter if you didn't know who he was? Yeah. 12th of June, same year, your tweets cheer me up. Your timeline is good. 23rd of September, my curtains need hung bad. Uh -huh. We were trying to encourage him because uh, with this first show or something like that. You that a long time ago. You said on the 18th of December, please go and see Richard Gadd's show. It's well written and neurotic. Yeah, yeah. The filmed bum shots are the best, fantastic yeah. ass. It was a joke. It was a joke. Right. We were trying to oh, I guess it was part of one of his comedy shows. He had mentioned it in that show, and she was say she's saying that she said sorry that happened to you. Okay, uh, maybe. It's so weird. Encourage him. Nothing negative though about it, though. Uh, no, because I didn't think he was a complete psychopath who was going to attack me in this way. But the show did involve you. Th this this show here, not uh, that show there. That made no reference. This was to a you. previous show. It made no reference to you that show. Which the, one, the one you're talking about. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. So, you know, it's funny this is coming up now. My, my. Well, but wasn't the, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so confused. Was the original show called Baby Reindeer? <laughs> so how does it not reference her? View is it's all about the money. I'm, some of this is a little confusing, some of the timeline, which I guess is her tactic. That's the point. You're supposed to be fucking confused. Yeah, the Martha Barstool Edinburgh Festival thing wasn't making any money. He failed as a comedian. He'd failed as an actor. And therefore, Wait, the what? you know, it's funny this is coming up now. My, my view is it's all about the money. Mm. Yeah, the Martha Barstool Edinburgh Festival thing wasn't making any money. He failed mm. as a comedian. He'd failed as an actor. And therefore, let's make some money, sell this to Netflix. Um, I think anyone in their right mind, you had a group of guys on there in their 20s. Mm. They don't believe it. What was your upbringing like? I don't know. I might believe some of it. The story's a little sketchy. You don't know where you live, but you somehow sent them letters. I don't, I don't know. Um, you're a fucking diabetic, but you're having iced teas or lemonades? I mean, maybe. I mean, I guess that's why you're diabetic, but I don't know. I was going to say standard Scottish. This is saying standard Scottish, Scottish countryside. Happy? I mean, happy? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, impoverished, but um, middle class upbring upbringing, if you like. Any you know. siblings? Impoverished, but middle class. Uh, that doesn't really add up to me. I have a sister. My mother worked incredibly hard. My parents got divorced when I was nine, but she worked like a Trojan. Are either parents still alive? Uh, my mother is, yeah. And is, how does she feel about this? I've not talked to her about it. I'm, I'm hoping she'll have just seen the Scottish headlines and that's it. She's not an internet freak. Or anything like she has that. no idea what's happened to you. <laughs> An internet freak, Jesus. Um, she, she, We're freaks, guys, and it's true. She will know uh, bits. And she was very, very angry with Laura Walker for doing the original article when I went for parliamentary You haven't selection. talked to your mother about it? Um, no, and that may seem strange, but I don't... Wait, but didn't she say her mom was angry? No idea what's happened to you. Um, she, she will know uh, bits. And she was very, very angry with Laura Walker for doing... Wait, so she knew... She was mad at Laura Walker, which I'm, is, is the name of the woman who played her? Um, <laughs> I don't know this, um, right? Like who's the, who's the, Laura Walker is the woman who played her, right? I just look at Laura Walker. Um, is she saying that she knows her mom's angry at her, but you haven't talked to your mom about that? This doesn't make any sense to me. The story makes no sense. So you didn't talk to your mom, but she is aware of Laura Walker playing you in the thing and she's upset about it? Oh, Laura Walker is the first person she stalked? Oh, she's talking about the article. Are you sure? Doing the original article when I went to Parliament. You haven't oh, okay. about it? Um, no, and that may seem strange, but I don't want to worry her. It's about the original stalker. Is that okay? Maybe I'm just misinterpreting of this. Let me see. Oh no, her name is Jessica. Okay, never mind. I'll tell her I've been I'll on the show. Mm. When it airs. Mm. I don't want to worry her. Let me ask you. Uh, the sun sorry, I'm getting the names uh, mixed up. When I looked up Laura Walker, oh, her name is Jessica Gunning. Okay, my bad. That was my that was my mistake. Reported an interview. Thank you for the six month small guy. I'm about to bust. Thank you, uh, say is, is that what your name is? With mm. Laura Ray, mm. uh, okay. who you've referenced to accuse you of inappropriate behaviour whilst mm. you work with her. Now, yeah. the background to this is that you came into contact with the late Glasgow MP Jimmy Ray, who died aged 78 in 2013, and his sister wife Laura, who was 62, when she was a former mm -hmm. Labour Party member. Uh, Mrs Ray said that uh, she gave 
uh, Aberdeen University law graduate, you. You did graduate from Aberdeen? Yes, yes. With a law degree. Oh. Uh, a trainee role at the legal firm, MacPhail Lawrence Partnership in 1997. Is that true? It was called L and L Lawrence. I think she forgets the name of her own firm. It's called L and L Lawrence. But, but that's all true. She gave you a trainee job. Uh, she lured me away from another firm. She headhunted me from another firm because she needed someone to do employment law. And I'm pretty good at employment law, so... She said that she had to sack you days later because mm -hmm. you were completely incapable of behaving yourself. I walked. Her staff were really... really <laughs> okay, so this is real. So she had to get rid of her almost instantly because she was fucking crazy. Okay. Rude to me. Um, most people, half the Labour Party, had been up there at one point or another and walked. Mm. She then said that mm -hmm. following you leaving, uh, obviously mm -hmm. very quickly, mm -hmm. that you then harassed her. Mm -hmm. uh, you were then, then known as Fiona Muir, obviously, mm -hmm. as you said, Muir Harvey. Mm -hmm. um, oh, she, did she change her, did she change her name intentionally to try to make it seem like she wasn't, like to try to erase all the, her history? Ray said she was so frightened she should mm -hmm. work as an firm with personal alarms. Mm -hmm. um, you were then served an interim interdict mm -hmm. to stop you from contacting the lawyer or her politician husband. Daily um, Record reported she that. She messed up, I know, and I still to speak to David about that, um, the author of that Daily Record article. Mm -hmm. She didn't, she messed up because I went into the court of session I could never <laughs> a lot of mistakes apparently everyone else is making that would formulate a really good lawsuit for her but she's just never pushed forward with that huh to get countrywide interdicts and an interdict at an injunction in scotland and england because i was going to move to london anyway um she mucked up um, so you went into court to get them yourself? Yes, against there was who? no need against Laura Walker and Ginny Ray. But she said one was served on you. Yeah, that's that's nonsense. An interim so check this out. And again, that there will be a public um, record. Of yeah, it. absolutely. And you're what, saying that it was never served. Uh, what we think, she served the initial documents, and then oh, she, did. she might uh, no. Um, she she. <laughs> Oh, this is embarrassing for her. Holy fuck. She the initial documents, and then there was no hearing. She, uh, it wasn't minuted for a hearing. Mm. I said I would defend, but she mucked that up too. She didn't fill up her second initial document. She then didn't minute for a decree in absence, so there is no interim interdict in Scotland. Why, why would two people who have no contact with each other at all, mm. um, Laura Ray mm. and Richard Gadd, why would they both portray you as a... Very unpleasant. Harassing. I don't know why Richard Gatt has, but uh, Laura Walker, it was certainly because I was going for parliamentary selection. It's two different, you get my point, two different people. Yeah, but Richard Gatt has people that. Richard Gatt, Gatt has used that. As well, a that's in the drama. Show. Is, is when they find out mm -hmm. that you had previously huh. harassed this family. I haven't harassed that family. I didn't harass that family. And also, I worked for her in 1980. Was that the same family where she supposedly like harassed the shit out of uh, a guy's. Like and harassed her because he had a deaf daughter or something. Like something really fucked up. Was that the same thing? Seven eighty eight. The parliamentary selection wasn't till two thousand. He googled up the article because I knew she's so calm too. It's so it's un it's fucking eerie as hell, man. To be honest with you. Uh, thank you for the sixteen month small gut from Night Shard. She gooned too close to something. That's what I'm saying, brother. That's what I'm saying. He'd done that. Mm. I never went back to the Holy Arms. He was spreading it around Camden that that um, that I was a stalker. Have so you, you, you're, you've never married. I know. Have you, have you had relationships Boyfriends, yeah. with, with yeah. men? Yeah. I mean, if you don't mind, mind me being pure I'm heterosexual. Yeah, I mean, how many, how many relationships have you had? I told the staff that relationships were out of bounds, a lot more than Richard Gadd has, I would say. Mm. Okay. He had a lot. Quite a few. Right. Well, I don't know if he had a lot. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how And obviously, now you're going, here's my yeah. point. Now you're going, yeah. well, now she's like, oh, he's gay. He's gay. Like, I think that's supposed to be an insult for him. To be like, I would never, but he was gay. Of course, we're not together, you know? Then the men that you've dated over the years won't see this. Yeah. They'll be aware of it. They'll hear you. I don't think they, if your next question is going to be, am I stalking them? I think the answer is going to be no. Well, I just wonder how, the, yeah. how do you think they would view you? I think they are going to think what I think about Richard Gad, that he's completely off his head. Maybe not. And I'm not worried about the current one because he's a lawyer and he. Do you currently have a boyfriend? Me, yeah. He's oh, she currently has. Wait, what? Didn't she, am I dumb? Did she just say she wasn't dating anybody? Maybe I'm stupid. The lawyer? Yeah. In London? Doesn't matter where he is. Mm. Uh, long, you know, I'd long, rather. No, no, I'm saying, but how long have you been? Five years, five years. You've been in a five so, year yeah, relationship. Yeah, so I don't. So, so what does he think? I don't want this? to drag him in. He thinks this is horrendous. All of my lawyer friends do, all of my professional friends do, other people do. Um, people are being really sympathetic. Uh, people I don't know are saying things like, are you getting hounded in the street? You know, people are being really, really nice. I mean, after. Anyone who does know about this. I feel like none of this is true. <laughs> okay. You know, here's the thing I don't know the truth. Mm. You do. And you've been emphatic in yeah. the number of denials you're yeah. making here. That's right. But many of those things that I've put to you can be proven. 
You're talking about emails and an email trail thing. All that. You know, all of that. You're obsessed with... Uh, sorry, I don't mean to be horrible. I'm not obsessed you. with anything. You're, you're, you've gone on at length for a good 10 minutes about the emails. Well, be well yeah, because, I mean, uh, those are huge. If you're denying the emails and if they're real, I mean, you're fucking crazy, you know? So... Because yeah. emails... Because of so, last number. Well, mm. there's a huge number and voice messages. The voice messages he's kept apparently, mm. and it and there he's is a, maybe taping me in the holy arms. I don't know if he's got any voice messages. But if he has three hundred fifty voice messages and it's you, it doesn't mean the drama is true. Uh, uh, is it possible he's got three hundred fifty? I I mean no, it doesn't mean that it's all true. But it does it does give him significant credibility if he has proof that you sent him forty one thousand. In fact, if if that's true, I mean like all the other like minor speculations are almost irrelevant. Like who really gives a shit at that point? Because it's like okay, maybe some of the uh, areas are a little chubbed up a little bit or sensationalized in, in a certain direction. But um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because that's fucking crazy. That many emails is fucking crazy. Um, I messages. doubt that very much. I just don't think so. You doubt it? Yeah, I, I doubt it. I mean, unless he's been taping me. I mean, if you've never really contacted him, if he's he got three, taping me in the holy arms though. But if he's got three hundred fifty four contacts, yeah, but if these are on his phone, yeah, it doesn't matter what whether they're on a phone, tablet, whatever they're on. I've not contacted. But I'm curious, him. why would there even be a possibility of him having that number of voice messages from you? Because he's crazy. He wants to make this up. I mean, I've not phoned the guy. I don't have his number. Yeah, you're you're number. not sure that he hasn't got those. I think he, the only explanation for having a voicemail from me would be um, taping me in the holy arms. That's the only thing. Uh, was she just arguing that like if she has um, voice messages, it was because when they were together, um, maybe he recorded the messages and what made it seem like it, you weren't there? Like, I don't understand. It's or that you left messages on his phone. That's the other explanation, which just didn't happen. You can't be sure. I can't be sure because I didn't have his number. Right. You just said you weren't sure if he's... Well, it doesn't matter if you have his number. You could send somebody voice messages without having a, a phone number, right? Like, you could send it to them through, you know, email, for instance, or something. Your voice message... Yeah, what I mean is somebody could be taping me. You know, somebody could have taped me in the holy arms. Oh, but, on a dictaphone or something but if like he, that. My, here's my point to you. Is yeah. that these are easily provable things. Yeah. He's either got them or he hasn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean... We, we, and the email... I mean, she's got nothing to lose at this point. Might as well just lie her ass off and, and try to put some plausible deniability and or, or not plausible deniability try to put some kind of um doubt hint of doubt in people's brains you know Looking for disclosure of that but and the emails obviously mm -hmm. there'll be an ip address and that if that, yeah. if that mean, leads to you yeah i mean my point is though even if that were true mm. i didn't lunge at him across the bar i didn't essentially assault <laughs> even if that was true i didn't do all these other things well i don't know how i'd feel i don't know if i would trust you because uh those are pretty big things that you might have done. <laughs> him in a canal, I didn't go to jail. I understand. So, uh, here's, here's my point to you. Yeah. Here's my point to you, Fiona. And I'm not trying to catch you out. I'm not trying to trap you. Oh, uh, you might be a little bit. He's being nice to her, I will say. But I mean, this is, you are trying to trap her. That's what we're here for, let's be real. Which maybe gets into the conversation. I mean, she may be truly unwell, and this might not be <laughs> the most appropriate way to interact. But I wonder if Pierce is going to get her ass next. By her. I'm genuinely fascinated by this story. I watched the drama. I saw them declare it at the start as a true story. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the interviews since with all various people. Mm -hmm. And it's clearly a very complex situation, this. But unless I'm mishearing you, I think what you're saying is that there is a possibility that you send a lot of emails. No, and a lot no, of I, I didn't say that. But that it doesn't mean that you did the more serious things. Yeah, I am not saying at all that I sent loads of emails. Um, you maybe misheard, play back the interview. What I'm saying is a handful at most. If mm. if I did, congratulations about the show. But if he does have 350 voice messages... I know that he doesn't. And it's your voice. He doesn't. And everyone can now hear your voice. Unless he was taping me in the holy arms. Or, or he just kept them on his phone. I didn't phone him. Mm. Well, we would be able to, to distinguish something like for her talking to people um, versus, you know, a recording, so... You sound unconvinced, but no, I'm not. No, I'm not I'm honestly, I mean, what? No. So, it's your point that you are you challenging him to reveal this evidence? No, I. <laughs> the, yeah, you would say yes if you're that confident. I just would. I would challenge him to leave me alone because you're calling him a liar and you're calling Netflix accomplice. I didn't use liars. those words. I said this, the, the. Well, you didn't even use those exact words. You're calling them liars. The story and um, the play, the the Netflix mm. show, is not true. No, but if they say that you sent, well, if they say it is true and you're saying that it's not true, then you're calling them a liar, which is fine. But forty one thousand emails. Well, they, they are completely messages. wrong. All seven hundred forty four. They're tweets. completely wrong. So they are lying. They are lying. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In effect, he is lying, and they are lying. In and effect. in order for a dramatization to be true. Mm. It, 
Well, let's just be clear. A dramatization doesn't necessarily mean that it's all inaccurate. This most likely is some kind of a dramatization in some ways, shapes, and forms, right? Um, you know, again, I saw him say that, like, this, this is how the story felt. Like, he was trying to communicate the emotions he felt in the story. Which, by the way, again, you could have a conversation about how that's not uh, good. So there probably are aspects that are, are uh, you know, sensationalized. But it sounds like the overalls are pretty true, you know? 41,000 emails... How many did he send back is the real question, you know, if any. So It's got to be, you know, the only defences are Veritas, I'm telling the truth, um, or um, the whole drama needs to be true. They have built it as a true story, so has he, and it's not. Mm. It's blatantly not. Even if the email thing was true, the rest is not. So why what, would you qualify that? Yeah, why would you, yeah, why would you qualify that? Even if the email, uh, you know, even if the email thing is true, it's not true. It's like, well, why do you feel the need to say that? You keep insisting it's not true. Yeah. Sorry, why would I watch? Why would you suddenly qualify even if it's true about the emails? I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Right. That's not the... Uh, I don't know. But, but when, I feel like I wouldn't in this instance. Can you say even if the emails were true? I didn't send it 41,000 It doesn't, it doesn't mean the more serious stuff is. Let me rephrase that. That's really what you're saying, right? I mean, I, I don't want to force you into saying anything yeah, that's I mean, not actually true, but it seems to me that it may be possible that you have communicated all this stuff with him but that doesn't mean you did the more serious thing yeah, yeah it that, doesn't that's mean you, true. it doesn't mean you attacked his girlfriend it doesn't mean you smashed yeah. up a bar yeah. it doesn't mean you did any of those things or threatened anybody else. it just yes you had a relationship with this guy and you did contact him a lot i knew this guy i didn't contact him a lot i've never said that in this interview at all no no but, mm -hmm. I, but interestingly for me as an interviewer and I'm just trying to get to the truth. You understand? No, no, I, I, I honestly I'm not trying to see to, that. It's your show. I'm yeah, not trying no, to trip you that. up. I'm, I'm just trying to get to the truth. I see that. He, he has put his version out there, and the world is watching. Absolutely. It. Millions what? and millions of people around the world have I had know. Richard Gadd's version. I know. And I'm simply saying to you that yeah. you, have a, you have a chance here, Fiona, I think, and take this any way you want, but you have a chance here to concede that some of these things might be possible. But that doesn't mean. <laughs> I mean, she, if she was going to do that, she would have been better off not even going on the show. And not even like giving her side of the story, you know what I mean? Like that would not. If you're going to concede anything, you should just be like, no, I'm not going to bother going on here. So yeah, the more serious things. Yeah, happened. I mean, what I'm saying is because the more serious yeah. stuff we know is serious, right? If you were, yeah, a, if you were in the jail or something, if you were a violent serious, stalker or if yeah. you'd had a previous situation where you got this interim internet, which we know <laughs> was served on you. No, it, it was not. Sorry to interrupt there. No, she has repeatedly maintained this over 25 years. Mm. I checked with the Sheriff Clark. Another lawyer checked with the Sheriff Clark. We think that the, the previous mm. scenario happened. She does not have an interim internet. Mm. I think she's quite wrong. Okay. If the okay. I feels like she's just trying. To, she. It sounds like she's just denying reality on the on a lot of these these points. I don't understand the difference in these technicalities. Um. But again, I imagine that Pierce Morgan's team would have done the best to fact check this as well. No. Sheriff Clark can produce that and say she didn't muck up and minuted for decree. Why was I not served? And if, if Richard, injunction. Gad, if Richard yeah? Gad is watching this, what's your message to him? Leave me alone, please. Um, get a life, get a proper job. I am horrified. <laughs> get a proper job, it's funny. What you've done. Mm. And you will categorically be taking legal action? Absolutely, against both him and Netflix. You, you said your boyfriend's a lawyer, so this yeah. can be done. He's not doing it, no, I'm not doing it. Somebody else is Have you instructed it. lawyers? Uh, we, Why wouldn't you do it if you're such a good lawyer? I don't we've instructed them in part, but we want to explore all the options out there. There are a number of, number of people to sue. We can't all be in ten courts all at once. So. Who else are you planning? Oh, yeah, who else don't you? Wouldn't you do like a like a like a group lawsuit? Let's see. Uh, the Daily Mail. Anyone that, that's saying this is true and harassing me and um, that kind of thing. Mm. We 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 have not had time to do everything. If 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 mm -hmm. the investigation, if you sue and there's discovery, mm -hmm. and it turns out that forty one thousand emails mm -hmm. did come from a device belonging to you, mm -hmm. how would you feel about that? I wouldn't be suing if I thought there were forty one thousand emails out there. We understand how easy it is to find them. I understand completely. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know, dude. This is fucking crazy. And that if they did exist, and you're categoric that they didn't, mm -hmm. it would it would obviously it wouldn't blow the him. whole case. It wouldn't blow the case against Netflix because, and it wouldn't blow the case against him. No, no, you might well make, have... making out it's a true story. No, 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 no. no what I mean, I'm back no, no, to my no, original no, position. Yeah, I, I understand, and I understand that it's obviously put your life into a very difficult position. I'm trying to see could she actually sue? Like, it's I don't know. Very and, and their central claim. She's going to sue. Yeah, she says that, but do you think that she's really going to sue? That they made all this effort not to lead to you being identified. I don't think it stands water. I don't think it stands water. To me, it's pretty... Um, I could have... Listen, I've been a journalist 40 uh, years. I could have discovered it was you in about 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
once I'd watched Yes, that. I agree. I discovered it was me when I saw the, the BBC breaking mm. news baby reindeer show at the Edinburgh Festival. Mm. When- I mean, uh, what I find... What, how did she say she re- found out that it was her? And I was Googling up just the news that day or the weather or something, and this came up, and it was he was holding up a placard mm. or a newspaper article, MP's wife stalker, all you need to do is Google that. Then I saw the name of the show, and I thought, bloody hell, what's he up to? And um, I tried to get a friend to go see the show mm. because she was based in Edinburgh, but she was on holiday. Um, nobody I know had seen that show. She was on holiday. Dude, so many excuses. So weird. Um, either. Um, so I was really shocked. I was very upset. <laughs> okay. For two or three days, and then the general plan of action among my close friends was look, just you know, let him get on with things. He's not. Ooh, really- I I feel like I don't know, man. I, I'm not. I don't know if I believe uh, that these are these close friends in the room with us right now. Like, where are these close friends, dude? Be that damaging. You don't really know him. This will go away. <laughs> when did you last, last have any contact with him? Famous last words years ago. Do you, years, do you remember years when? ago, no. Um, I, I left the Holy Arms, didn't go back, and he was calling me a stalker and things. And there were various things happening in the Holy Arms. You know, other women were. What the fuck is the Holy Arms at a bar? Warning me about them and everything. Yeah. About him. About him and others with bad conduct. Oh, what women? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All of a sudden, other women were warning me of this guy. He was a fucking freak, a creep. What the hell? All new stuff. In relation to the 106 letters that he and Netflix say you sent, well, here's my point. You've, yeah. you, you've admitted sending him one, mm. and that presumably was a handwritten letter. Could, could it be, um, are, are you thinking I was maybe mistaken that I maybe did? No, forgotten. no, no, I'm just saying if, if we accept that the one that you admit to mm. sending is in your own handwriting, mm-hmm. he has another 105 letters in your Pierce, it's handwriting. It's yeah, but are, are you prepared for him to show... That one. He's maybe forged things. I mean, people people forge a lot. Oh, forgery. I mean, they have like legitimate individuals who uh, it's their job to figure out if things are forgeries. I remember watching uh, Law and Order SVU and Stephen Colbert was a forger on it but they found out that it, that it, he was forging them specifically because he was left-handed i think in the in that episode and the other people were writing in right-handed and they could figure that out based on the, the pen stroke so a lot of things you think he, could, he, he could successfully write 105 that is to himself well, I certainly- this is probably not a very good idea for her to engage in um because i feel like a lawyer might be able to sit down and, like really parse through this information and be like yeah she said this this wasn't accurate she said this this wasn't accurate she made this claim this is a blah blah blah, blah you know <clears throat> No, but you, you admit to sending one. My point is, if it turns out the other 105 are exactly the same handwriting, wouldn't that point yeah, to I mean, make... Yeah, obviously bring in handwriting experts. I didn't do it. No you only, you only ever sent sorry. one letter. Yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't sent that guy 106 letters. Do you still email people? Uh, what, what do you mean? Do you send emails? Yeah, yeah. Do you have the same email address you've always had? Um, I, I had six at one point. Why? The fact you have six. Why? Um, because I like to keep people on different phones and different emails. It's, six it's different emails. Uh, maybe four. I think it's four to six. Yeah, it's, it's it easier. Why? Why do you have? Why? That's weird. What? Four it's six. easier. So you have some for your utilities, some for close friends, whatever. Yeah. But six is a lot. Uh, yeah, well, how is it easier? What? I don't understand. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't know anybody with six email addresses. You don't know many people, then. I know. I know people with four or six emails right. addresses. Or was it four? Just, or... just four or six. Six. I can't remember. Probably six. She's just fucking with her at this point. This is crazy. How, how many do you use today? I had four phones. Um, I've- four phones? <laughs> what the fuck? Why? Why would you have four phones, bro? That's crazy. Oh, my God. But one today, but I only email select friends. And you had oh you have four God. phones? Oh yeah. Um, two broke. They were very, very old. One was brand new and broke. And it's still to be returned to the shop. I like keeping people on separate phones as well. And maybe that makes me a maniac or a stalker or something. But if you've got somebody on about your electricity bill or somebody on about some work or something, it's it's nice to keep it separate, you know. So um, I didn't do that in Scotland. You didn't have to, but the volume of calls. Do, do you down think, here is, um, Fiona? Do you think mm, if somebody did send someone, yeah, forty-one thousand emails, three I think that's excessive. Message, obviously, yeah. Would that to you just a just a scooch, just a little excessive there? That's nothing crazy though. It's a little. Uh, that might be a little excessive. Would that mean someone's stalking someone? Uh, well, yeah. I'm saying, I'm thinking, yeah. Listen, no, I mean, it could be, you know, it could be your wife. It could be you. you know. <laughs> Bro, my wife, even my wife, 41,000 emails. That's fucking crazy. You know, you may be sending emails every day about the kids or something like that. I don't know. Who the fuck emails each other anymore? What? 41,000 is a lot. That's how many a day? My math. Like 112. My math isn't great. Yeah, funny. This is working this time of night. Um, it's but a it's lot. a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean they're stalking somebody. They could be great friends. You know, they could have been friends for 50 years or something. Well, they would have to be real great friends there. Was he ever your friend, Richard Gay? Uh, no. I thought, you said, I thought that she said earlier that they were friends, that they had like banter amongst friends. What? Stuff asked me that as well. No, I don't think so. You had a lot of banter with him. Yeah, but banter's one thing. Scottish banter down here is quite kind of welcome. You know, it's not really it's not really fun city, is it? It's not jokey city. Uh, were you ever in love with him? Jokey city. Yes. Is that a serious question? Yeah. No. Oh, I thought she said yes. She said appears. No. It's not a question. <laughs> the fuck? A question of... By his own admission, hmm. he has said that he led you on at times. And he clearly I gave was... him the brush off. He asked me to sleep with him with a big green spot in his face one day. I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. He asked... What the hell is a big green spot in his face means? Is that like a fucking thing that they say? Did you do what? He asked me to sleep with him. He said, would I like my curtains fixed? And I laughed. And he said, that's a euphemism. Do you want me to come home with you? And I said, I've got a boyfriend. <laughs> okay. I gave him the brush off. And big... Well... <laughs> Yeah. Big time. What's the boyfriend's like? Just first name, you know. What's the first name of the boyfriend? You got a name for the. You got a first name of the, uh, the boyfriend. I think you know. It's subtly, subtly so. But the bottom line is, is I think fancy? this is behind him. No, I don't fancy him. Mm. I don't fancy little boys. Oh, little boys. Without jobs. <laughs> That's kind of funny and based. <laughs> that sounds awful. That sounds really, really callous. But you know. People will watch this. You've watched the Netflix series, mm. and like me, they 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 will be trying to work out mm. where the truth lies. It seems to me that either you're innocent mm. in the way that you've mm. claimed to be, mm. and you've been horribly defamed mm. here. I think mm. at the very least, the Netflix duty mm. of care and Richard Gow's duty of care has been a spectacular failure. I agree. Right, regardless of anything else, regardless mm. of your culpability, well, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, that is, I guess, duty of care. I mean, if you if you have that uh, ethical statement, like for sure. But this was always going to come out. It doesn't matter if they change the names. You know, they, this was always going to come out like almost instantaneously. So I agree with that. I think the duty of care has failed because people identified you incredibly quickly. So they've made this what they say is a true story, mm. and everyone's worked what out the of you. <laughs> and the picture they paint is of a a completely crazed stalker ruining a man's life. Albeit he accepts that some of his behaviour may have led mm. the person on. Can I ask a question? Do you happen to know how much he's made out of this Netflix thing? I would imagine... Probably a good amount of money, yeah. Several million pounds. Yes, I, I would say three to four million. A lawyer I know well thought... He ah, yes, a lawyer that she happens to know well. Yeah, I know a lawyer well too. He's a wee nobody and he suggested 750 to 100,000. I said, no, I think you're looking more about three or four million. And I think the, the fuck are you talking about? The more he publicizes, um, it goes up. Um, <laughs> I just kind of this lawyer guy that I know. He's like, you know, you probably make a lot of money. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, you know, uh, according to how how much it streams, I don't know. I don't know what the contract they signed. I think he's done bloody well out of defending. Do you, do you resent me. that? Um, I don't resent any Scott getting on. This is. <laughs> well, I would. If they're lying about you, why wouldn't you resent them? It's not what this is about. Um, but he's effectively um, making money out of what he he's says. He's making money out of what my he says misery, is you yeah. stalking him. Yeah, he's making money out of untrue facts. He's been the ultimate misogynist. I guess it wouldn't be a fact, then, huh? The actress was also... Ultimate misogynist, dude. Holy fuck, I thought he didn't have a job, but he's a massager. So not appealing for calm, he was appealing for calm. I think he did that to sort of stir things up more. Um, I think they knew exactly what they were doing, and I think your staff were talking about it, Martha, the sequel or something mm. like this. The sequel. Oh, I guess that makes sense to have a sequel. I mean, I feel like it wouldn't be a good idea to do a sequel. You kind of ended it really well. I think it's time to move on, you know? It's just completely That's what people crazy. are hinting at. It's completely crazy. Well, your staff put that to me mm. and put to me, should I write a book about this? Well, I've got other things to do, but... Um, it's a yeah, write a book. Let's hear it. Possibility. You, you've got a she can make a lot of money writing a fucking book about how crazy she is. Law degree. Use, yeah. Law degree. So you're obviously very bright. How did you do at school? I've got a photographic memory. I was top of the school, apart from the science... Um, which which school was that? Uh, Shit, I feel that science is rough sometimes, brothers. Hi, I went to this. I'm just kidding. I did well in math and science, but not so much in English. Science um, person got the most marks because you can get 99 percent. How many O and A levels did you end up with? I got six hires, uh, two X S S Y S's, and they were all sort of most were A band ones, which was when when the A band one was top of the thing. I was and with your law degree, what did, what grade did you get? Not bad. I mean, oh, oh right, what you was know. It? Uh, I just did an ordinary degree and then a diploma in legal practice. Well, what grade, what grades did you get from? Um, all right grades. All right grades, but, you know, what, what, I went out what, what, part, what partying. It would, I didn't do an honest degree. So, you know, just bog standard grades, what, what really. What degree did you... You did a law degree? Or? I did a law degree with 13 subjects, 13 law subjects. So it wasn't a CPE or anything, um, which I also have from down here, but uh, mm. it was 13 law subjects. This was, is from Aberdeen University? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So what, what degree did you end up with? I mean, uh, she seems she seems like uh, she's smart, for sure. Like, all the law stuff seems confirmed. And again, the way that she uh, allegedly manipulated him was pretty f- almost impressive. <laughs> I mean, again, in the, in the show, she gets out of... Um, she gets a... She apparently is really good at stalking people. Like, in the show, they present her as somebody who, like, stalks really well. Um, to the point where like, she was able to evade some of the police officers, like, going after her. Uh, so... You know, I, she probably is very intelligent. She knows how to craft, uh, re- and she's calm. She's she articulates herself well. So a law degree, and then I did a politics degree after that. And what grade Politics, did you get women's from? studies. Um, I did substantially better in that because I did more work. You know, I think in our day when you went to university, you there's a reason you see got a photographic memory. But yeah. what, what grade did you get? It, all right grades. I mean, not top of the year or anything. No, no, but you, all right you get, grades. You, when you do a degree, you get a... Yeah, oh, you're asking me what marks I got for 13 subjects. I can't remember. Well, no, you but, end up with it. Did you get a first-class degree? Oh, no. A... Well, I, I said I didn't do an honours degree. I wanted to go out and practice, so it was an ordinary degree I did. Right, but you can't remember how you did. I, I did all right. I didn't do top, <laughs> top of the year. Hmm. But you're, the other graduates at the same time, they'd all remember you. Some of them remember me. One of them did incredibly well. He's a high court judge. Mm. Uh, some people didn't do well. I think the general idea in the 80s was we didn't really do much work. That sounds absolutely awful. But, you know, that was kind of the 80s. If it came to it, would you, would you take a lie detector test? Yeah. I wouldn't. Why? I would never take a lie detector uh, test. They're not admissible in court for a reason. Like, so why would you t- why would you use that as a test? And by the way, could you imagine that she did and she passed it? Do you know that she, like, imagine she was just so, because there are people that can actually fudge the lie detector tests. Imagine that she was able to do that. That'd be fucking insane. Yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't doubt it that she was like, she was that fucking cold, you know? Yeah, possibly, yeah. I would need to consult other lawyers about that. If we that. set one up, you would do it. Yeah, I have a photographic memory, but I can't remember, uh, I can't remember his, like, details. Was it four or six emails? Uh, you know, uh, you know, maybe four. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. A lie detector test for what? You know, I'm well, no, the, the police, as you know, the police use them. Um, they're just an indication. They really. use them for mass murder and things like that. Um, well, no, they actually they yeah. use them in many cases just to determine whether they think someone's going to They the don't use them that much. I know you've done the programs of women behind bars and mm. things. I, I, I confess I've never seen one, but it's not used that much. Well, look, I'll be honest with you. But that's other thing. Since yeah. you've mentioned it, I've done, yeah. I've done a lot of crime interviews with people who've committed mm. way worse offences than what you've been accused yeah, of. Yeah, I haven't. Um, I know we have. You know, way, way more. Mass murderers, serial killers and so on. And, it, you know... They're all, I've got to say, almost all of them are very good liars. Could it be, people to be asking this, watching you thinking, either she's genuinely innocent here or she's a terrible liar. I have a photographic memory, but I can't really remember what marks I got in school. Yeah, incredible. Who is capable of all of these things. I don't lie. and um... That's exactly what I, that's exactly what I, a liar, say all the time. I don't lie, brothers. I, I tell. I'm not a liar, brothers. You know? White lies, if I absolutely have to, like when my 94 year old ex neighbor was dying, we all knew she was dying, and okay. I'd phoned her in the hospital the night before. And she's like, Am I dying? I'm like, Nah, you're all right, don't even worry about it. And I lied and said, You know, have a good sleep, everything's going to be fine, and that, you know, you know, so I'll tell a white lie like that when oh. somebody clearly needed some rest. Uh, what does a black lie sound like to you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Best, and, how many, how many know, times did you meet Richard Gay? Don't know. What would you guess? Okay. I have a photograph of memory, guys. How many times did you meet this person? I don't know. I have no idea. Five, six. Maybe five, six times. Oh, what is it? Five or six? That's it. Yeah. In your life. Yeah. Yeah. How do you- Didn't she say like two or three times originally? The only fuck. This is crazy. Do you think it's come to this? If that's all true. I think he wanted to make money. I think he picked on somebody. There was a backstory there with that stalker article out there, right? So stalking's in vogue, going to prison's in, vo- in vogue. Um, what do writers say or English mm. lecturers or something? Write about what you know. And to people who are watching, look down the barrel of yeah, that camera. To people who are watching this. Don't stare at me. I feel like she's in my fucking soul right now. And who <laughs> still doubt you. What do you say to them? I think you should watch this. I think you should look at the number of articles that Richard Gadd and Jeff... More like farticles, am I right? ...the actress have done and how Netflix and he have promoted this. Um, I think you should look at um, him saying, I am some sort of mental case and judge for yourselves. I think I've... I feel like... I feel like you're a very articulate mental case. I don't know. Frankly, from ta- from hearing her talk, um, I can imagine that her outside of the situation doesn't necessarily come off as somebody who's like deeply disturbed 
you know like uh, and maybe i just don't understand scottish people but she almost comes off like a normal fucking person like i know that's, that's so weird and maybe she is maybe 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 richard gad really got us maybe he really gad one over on us <laughs> i don't know but she she seems like fucking normal as hell dude She's almost fucking crazy. Because I can't change your mind on this. Um, I can just rebut what has been said. You need to make up your own minds. But okay. my mind is made up. He's a liar. And my friends say okay. likewise. Okay. What are they? Fiona Harvey, are they? thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Who the fuck are your friends? Thanks for having me. All right. Listen, that was interesting. That's all I can really say. Definitely glad I watched that. 